Hello ladies and gentlemen, today I wanted to talk about the upcoming Doom. Not the original Dooms, but the new one. The new badass fourth installment that is yet to come from the masterminds behind the original Dooms. So today I'm going to be covering what we know about Doom 4 so far. Uh, I'm going to talk about some details of it, as well as going to some analysis of what I think is to come, as well as talking about the game in general. Now, a lot of my resources I found online on forums or via posts from game companies, or not game companies, but things like PC Gamer and things like that. So, basically, I'm just going to be telling you guys know, uh, about stuff that you might not actually know already. This video is probably going to be very long, so what I've done is, in the description below, I've detailed the key points at key times about things to talk about. So, if you don't want to watch the entire thing and you might get bored halfway through it, just go to the bits that pique your interest and listen to those. So I've got those all done for you, so it's it's easy for your life. So go ahead and do that. If not, just sit back and enjoy the video. Thank you. As we all know, a teaser trailer was revealed a few months back, which sparked a lot of excitement, a lot of different opinions and views about it, mostly positive. The teaser revealed a slow awakening of some, some what we presume to be the Cyber Demon, obviously with the similarities to the original one, such as the Arm Cannon. If you look very closely on the Cyber Demon's Arm Cannon, you'll notice the UAC logo. Now, it's very similar to the one of Doom 3, which was based on Mars. However, if you compare the Mars UAC logo to that of the original Dooms, where they were set on the Phobos moon base, uh, and, you know, Deimos and that kind of thing, it's a little bit different. Now, probably just probably just different in design in general, but maybe it could tell tell the fact that obviously with the Cyber Demon's arm cannon having the Mars UAC logo, it's most likely gonna be set on Mars rather than let's say on Earth or a moon base of some sort. Also what I noticed was the door in the in the trailer. When the door goes up, you don't see it very well. However, if you just pause or slow down the video, you'll notice some very, very familiar details. Because it's basically a re remastered version of the original Doom textured door. So basically, when the game says it's going back to its old roots, yeah, it kind of really is, is as far as the detail goes on the door. So yes, the door that you're seeing is the same one. And for, th for the obvious ones, if you really need them pointed out, the sounds, the shotgun, the pumping of the shotgun, and obviously the door. Just more revamped. So there's some obvious ones there for you. So obviously, as a lot of us know, uh, those who were lucky to attend QuakeCon back in 2014 got to see an exclusive reveal of the game. Uh, they got to see gameplay, they got to see some of the monsters, or demons rather, some of the guns, and, and how the gameplay was. From it, it was very exciting, it was new, it went back to its old school roots, and it was very, very promising. Uh, the gameplay was showcasing weapons, including the chainsaw, the shotgun, the plasma rifle, uh, as well as demonstrating some very brutal melee combat. Uh, similar to that of the very popular mod, Brutal Doom. Which is awesome, by the way. Now, obviously, they're just the basics from the trailer and everything we know. Obviously, there's been a lot of rumours, uh, maybe not even rumours, the actual things going around saying what the new Doom will entitle for the players, how the game will play. So, to begin with, Doom 4 is not going to follow suit of the modern shooters that we experience today. No aiming down the sights, no Call of Duty stuff, alright? Whilst visually, the graphics and performance will be rather modern, uh, as it's running under the ID's new Tech Engine 6. 6, 6, get it? 6, 6, 6? Never mind. The game, however, will return to its old school traits, and it will contain some of the following. Okay, so we've got, we're expected to have a lot of agility, strafing, running really fast, like the original Dooms. Double jumping will be a new element to the game, so being able to jump and then jump once more. Uh, opportunities for verticality as well. So, you'll be expected to see a lot of the level design similar to Doom 3, however, more spacious, more open, but giving you the chance to sort of climb up onto things or jetpack up. Um, there's been rumours of jetpacks being in the game too. Whether they were shown in the gameplay trail uh, reveals, I mean, uh, at QuakeCon, I'm not too sure, but there has been mentioned that there will be jetpacks. And obviously, like I said, fast-paced movement earlier, as, as I mentioned earlier, I mean. 
Um, carrying all weapons at once will be a thing, just like Wolfenstein the New Order. They're not afraid to do this whole two weapon switch system only, or like in Duke Nukem Forever where you can get up to four. You're getting all your guns, you're getting all your chainsaw, your shotgun, your plasma gun, all that kind of thing. Um, no iron sights, no aiming down the gun sights, although they, they could implement this in at a later date, but I doubt it if they are going to go to old school routes. And no reloading. So for a very modern game there is absolutely no reloading. Um, there's, it's just straight up run and gun. Uh, there's no taken cover, you are just there, you are shooting everything, blocking the, like dodging the attacks, that's it. But there's no, there's no take cover and reload and that kind of thing. Also, no regenerative health, which is a godsend for this game because we don't need generative health for this game. Only health pickups, and as I'll explain later on, some of them being dropped by the enemies themselves. And of course, the original baddies. We're expected to see revenants and mancubuses, uh, or mancubi, mancubi, whatever, and cyber demons, imps, all that kind of thing. So all of that is definitely going to be in it. Doom 4 is going to be a very old school styled shooter, but in a very modern graphic set. So we're talking similar to games, I'm just saying, not exact, but similar to games like the Shadow Warrior uh, reboot and the um, uh, Rise of the Triad games. So very fast, but looks really nice in modern graphics. With that being said, to be honest, I'm really confident to say that Doom 4's gameplay will deliver and be much more of an improvement than Doom, 4, uh, Doom 3, I mean. Doom 3 was good, don't, don't get me wrong, it was good, but it just wasn't, it didn't deliver original Doom's quality, but it did offer a lot of good things, and it is, it is still a game in place of my heart, among other Doom fans, most likely. Um, and it did live up to some expectation. They, it, it did fantastic on the atmosphere, the action horror element, and all that kind of thing, but we all really missed that original Doom 1 and 2 feeling. As for the game itself, visually, it will probably most likely look a lot like Doom 3, be very dark, and it'll have that really metal industrial um, UAC facility sort of feel to it. Other, rather than uh, Doom One and Two being really colourful, having all kinds of colour, colour on the palette. Um, we're also expected to see a lot more of the Martian surface, so a lot more of the Mars surface as well. Um, in Doom Three, it was it was a shame because outside being on the on the surface of Mars was really interesting and really fun, and you didn't get to explore it a lot or be out in it enough. So I think Doom Four is going to really bring that and allow you the opportunity to go out into that and explore it as well as uh, use combat within that sort of environment, which is a fantastic opportunity. Um, like I said, I don't really feel there's going to be a massively bright colour palette like the original Dooms. When, so when they say they're going to go back to their old school roots, don't literally take that literally. Because it just it probably just wouldn't work with how Doom 1 and 2 looks now. Um, so far it's expected that there's going to be just ambient music. Um, not a lot of word on whether there's going to be, you know, rock metal tracks or anything like that, although there has been some leaked songs that have got some really great ideas or like concepts of what kind of music may be in Doom 4, but we'll have to wait on the music side. I can't, I don't want to determine anything, but I don't want to get anything wrong about it, so we'll just stick to what we know for now. According to a doomworld.com forum, um, a guy who actually went along to the QuakeCon and, and saw the gameplay uh, and all that in the in the reveal. A guy called Goatlord on the doomworld.com forums uh, gave us a very nice detailed explanation about a lot of the stuff we saw. Now I'll post the link in the description below but I'm going to re read out a lot of the key stuff about it so it might be a while but there are some really amazing and interesting things so here we go. So first of all there was only about 10 to 15 minutes of gameplay shown. It was on a PC and it was live obviously. Uh, Doom is a remake of the original, but is set on Mars. Now, obviously, the, in, in Doom 1, for example, it was set in multiple places. You were on the moon base, or you are in hell, um, but it's going to be primarily set on Mars. Although, I personally think it's going to be likely that we're going to see other, other locations, perhaps hell, maybe if we're lucky, a moon base, or Earth. Um, the guy on the forum here says that additional locations seem likely, which is a good thing. Uh, there were two maps shown uh, that resemble a lot like Doom 3, as I mentioned a bit earlier. But they're much more expansive, they're open, there's lots, there's, pro there's uh, lot, a lot more opportunity for movement and, and just a lot spacious in general. 
The player's helmet provided overlaid information, replacing the static HUDs of the previous games. Now it says the static HUDs of the previous games, meaning we're probably going to get a HUD very similar to either Doom 3 or the original Dooms, so perhaps seeing Doom Guy's face again, which is quite an interesting feature. Um, again, there's not a lot of information on that one, but keep it in there. Early on, the player rips off an arm of a dead marine. Now, I've read it was a, a dead scientist, but who knows? And uses his hand to access another, un, uh, an otherwise restricted area, which sounds very cool. Uh, Doom Guy now has a combat uniform. It's it's not. I don't know if it's going to be the stereotypical green power armor that he always has, but he's going to have a combat uniform that looks very high tech, but helps facilitate the melee attacks, such as crushing an enemy's head. Nearly all enemies shown appear to have cybernetic elements, though they are equally as organic. So you expect to probably see the the classical imps and pinkies and stuff like that. But you know, just like in Doom 3, a lot of them had sort of a few cyber cybernetic parts to them. The layouts encourage jumping, with the player leaping very high and gracefully. Barrels will create enormous explosions. The first map had a geothermal theme, with lots of sparks and lava, the doors use the classic sound, just like in the trailer, and even look the part, so again, they look like the texture is all there, the sound and everything. Cargo ships or possibly drones could be seen flying in the distance. The second map featured a slightly hellish area that felt very reminiscent to Doom 64, complete with hanging body parts and pentagrams and candles. Uh, player movement ranges from creeping slowly to very fast, running around. Less so than Doom 1, so the speed is, is it's not quite as fast as Doom 1, but it's faster than Doom 3. The most human looking enemies looked very grotesque and used weapons that resembled light beams and, and possibly concentrated fire. The chainsaw, pistol, shotgun, super shotgun, or the double barrel, rocket launcher and plasma rifle were all shown. No sign of reloading or alternative firing. Enemies react to where they're hit. Many jibbed in a variety of ways depending on the weapon. The chainsaw in particular tore zombies down the middle in an extremely brutal and visceral manner. And it was different every time. The Revenant now has a jet pack and can kill, and can kill the player by ripping his arms off and beating him to death. The Mancubus had an extremely gruesome death involving having a piece of its gut shoved down its throat. Every weapon seemed to have lots of power. The shotguns were very good at range, and very explosive and, and very powerful in general. Sound effects were punchy and meaty. The music combined dark, ambient and industrial sort of themed music, but there's no, yet no signs of metal or guitars at all. The overall visual style is very detailed and resembles all of the Dooms. So we're getting a little bit of insight to the original Dooms, but mixed in with this modern sort of Doom 3-ish feeling as well. But um, there's far more going on in the scenes. It's not just static things. There's, there's things moving around, things happening, lights blipping, that kind of thing. The player can jump on top of enemies and perform brutal melee attacks. As for comparisons to Brutal Doom, the blood and gore is very extreme but appropriate within the context of the combat. The melee attacks never slow down the gameplay, and they happen most of the time in the point of view span in a couple of seconds. So, you know, it's not going to slow down anything down. You, you rip someone's head off and it isn't going to get you killed or slow down the entire game just to do it. It's there, it's enough for the player, it's very satisfying, and you can carry on and keep doing it. Um, each enemy looks unique, and the classic enemies are really recognisable. So. There's going to be some different ones, most likely, or maybe some different variants of the same creatures that we don't know about yet. But all the classics are still there. The Cyberdemon was shown at the end, just like in the trailer, but there was no combat. There is an implication that the monsters are all UAC, UAC experiments gone wrong. No sign of help from NPCs, so there's no one else around to help you, it's just you. The graphics aren't say particularly groundbreaking, but it looks much better than Rage and significantly better than uh, Wolfenstein The New Order. Overall, they're true, they're true to the gritty industrial tendencies of the series, complemented by a very moody use of light and shadow. So we're expected to get a very dark ambient sort of feel, just like Doom 3, however it's gonna look very a lot more vis visceral to, to the graphics and to, to how the game is playing and stuff. 
Okay, so now we can move on to some uh, enemy descriptions. Again, in the very same forum post on doomworld.com, the, some of the guys talk about the actual uh, appearances of some of the some of the enemies. So there were imps who, while lacking horns like the original one, were very menacing in appearance. Far better than Doom 3's, but at least one of them spawned out, spawned in very similar to that of Doom 3. So with the pentagram, the, the lightning. The, ver the revenants were very true to the originals and had a nasty, skeletal, rotting appearance, and apparently were very terrifying. One of the one of the mancubus enemies was shown. Uh, it had some interesting armor and was huge. It had a nice meaty sense of weight to it and it resembled uh, Doom 64's version slightly. There are a couple of Baron of Hells, also possibly Hell Knights, which looked very Doom 3-ish, but a lot better. They were very muscular and menacing, kind of pale too. The Cyberdemon was shown in the same shadowed stance as the teaser. There's not much to say about that though. A few other things to mention is that the HUD looks very futuristic and very cool. Also, health seems to spill out of fallen enemies as little round symbols with crosses. Alright, now I'm going to go on and read uh, a bit more from the exact same forum post. This goes into a lot of detail, so if you want to skip it, go ahead. Like I said earlier, I've got the times in the description below. Okay, so here we go. Marty Stratton, the executive producer of the game, said it begins just outside of an outpost on Mars at the beginning of a demon invasion. He said there's more to the story, but that's all they're going to go, go for at this point in time. First off, there's no confirmation that it was a pre-recorded demo. It was real-time gameplay, apparently, that an ID employee was playing on the stage. As for the basics, well, again, no one can confirm or, or not confirm whether there was health regeneration. Um, no one... No one recalls picking up a lot of health. There was a weapon wheel graphically displayed on the screen of the player's helmet, and the HUD also notified him of things like the atmos atmospheric changes, and on one occasion, a detected threat, uh, an enemy that had already come into view. No cinematics at all, which was good, uh, and it was pos there was a possible exception uh, at the very end, though, for the cyber demon. There were a couple of points of the where the control uh, was briefly taken from the player, such as when the player was uh, hoisting himself up onto a ledge uh, that he jumped and grabbed onto. And most of the classic weapons made an appearance. So you've got the pump action shotgun, the double barrel shotgun, the plasma rifle, rocket launcher and chainsaw as I said earlier. Graphically it was most comparable to what was seen in the teaser. So what we've seen in the teaser will look, that will be what, what the game will look like. So, some of the particles seemed a bit unfinished. But there were so so many damn things flying around the screen at once that it made it ver look very decent anyway. The texture resolution is definitely a big step above what we've come to expect from ID Tech 5. Although since Marty said they're now onto ID Tech 6, it's definitely it definitely seems they've made tech changes. Much more specular maps from refle reflective glimmers on surfaces than in Rage or Wolfenstein. The player started off in one of those old airlock rooms, similar to that of Doom 3 where he did a fancy little tossing and catching of a space helmet in his hands before putting it on. It was absolutely amazing animation. The animation all around for the rest of the demo was great too. The player walks into a vast cavernous area and below him is a huge pool of lava or molten seal of some kind. He was walking on a series of uh, walkways and seemed to, that seemed to network to a central hub. Basically something very sci-fi type, something from the set of of uh, dead space or aliens. Uh, the, the, the theme, the design of everything around was very reminiscent, like I said, to things like dead space and aliens in general. Uh, also reminded uh, a lot of the players about the final level of rage with the, all the high-tech environment, the, the walkways and all the doors and stuff like that. Um, the design integrity was pretty pretty consistent throughout the entire demo, so nothing, not a lot changed. Most of it was the same all around. There's a lot more industrial type areas and beautiful alien terrain as well in, in, a, in a few areas. But overall in general the environments are outstanding. So after maybe a couple of minutes of quietly wandering around the walkways, he starts encountering enemies in the form of possessed marines, just like in Doom 3 with the Zed security zombies, using weapons. And imps seemed very more acrobatic and ref reflexi uh, reflexive 
than in Doom 3. Overall, combat in the game seemed challenging and not just because of the number of enemies, but because of how spaced apart they were. The multi-leveled nature of the outdoor environment, coupled with the many large crates and other props later on, made it easy for enemies to attack from many different angles. All the enemies that made an appearance have already been de detailed, so I won't waste any time talking about those. They were really easily recognisable without being too close to the mirror copies of the original uh, or that of Doom 3. Overall, the enemy designs were close to Doom 3. Procedural damage on enemies was abundant. As mentioned, the player was able to perform finishing moves on enemies, mostly imps, which involve head stomping, limb tearing, inner gouging, and probably four or five beautiful executions for the chainsaw. During a segment where he tore through a line of imps, shotgun and double barrel shotguns could blow chunks, literal chunks, and in one case blew an imp right in half. All this makes it sound like endless combat, but it wasn't. There were quiet and tense moments as well, such as a sequence where the player had to open a biometric scanner. He does this by tearing off, as I've said earlier, a nearby corpse's arm and scanning it. This leads us to believe there will be puzzle solving now and then, at least some point in the levels. Objects of importance were not highlighted or anything either, which was good, so most of the items that are important that you have to find, you're going to have to find yourself. There was another sequence where he walked through a decimated corridor with walls caved in and wires and pipes hanging everywhere. With holes and gaps in the floor, there were bodies and, and pieces of bodies dangling everywhere among glowing pentagrams and candles. No enemies, just ominous atmosphere. Speaking of atmosphere, it seems like they're going with a mixed soundtrack of ambient industrial soundscapes. A bit reminiscent to that of Doom 64. In a further post uh, on a website called metro.co.uk, uh, it talks more about the game and the elements to it. Some of the stuff will be repeated but in, in, a, in a different way, but it's still very interesting to hear. So here we go. Again, links will be in the description below if you want to read about it, but I'm going to read out some anyway. So, like the original storyline, the game will be set on Mars, which is overrun by demons when a portal to hell is accidentally opened during an experiment. According to the executive producer, Marty Stratton, the game will be going back to where, to what made the original uh, great fast action, run and gun, uh, in inventive and creative combat. A lot of old school strafing was apparent in the footage that was shown, like I've said in the in the descriptions earlier, as well as new features such as jetpacks and the, the obviously ability to double jump and that kind of thing, which puts a new emphasis on finding higher ground and climbing out of the way of enemies, you know, trying to take cover from, from rockets and blasts and that kind of thing. There are also finishing moves, as said earlier again, uh, of all things with enemies flashing up, uh, flashing when they're near to death and allowing you to pull off jaws, stomp on skulls and pull out hearts. The iconic chainsaw is involved a lot. Apparently it works both ways as well, with demons at one point ripping off the player's arms and beating them to death with it, which got uh, a standing crowd ovation for that kind of thing. So it seems like from that, um, not only can you do the finishing moves, but the enemies can do finishing moves on you. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of different enemies have different move, like final move sets on you. So that kind of Mortal Kombat feeling where everyone's got that specific, themed, unique uh, finishing move on you. Everything so far suggests that the game is not going to be taking itself too seriously. Uh, it's got huge weapons, including, like I said earlier, the plasma rifle, rocket launcher, shotguns. The shotgun in particular is described as comically large, um, but so far, no BFG. However, this is Doom. You you could bet all your money that the BFG is going to be in it. Doom is not Doom without the BFG. The game itself is being developed on the new ID Tech Engine 6, as I mentioned earlier, which is promising to support 1080p and 60 frames per second. The game will be released hopefully on Xbox One, PlayStation 4 and PC. Exactly when it will be out is unknown, but apparently there are two separate gameplay demos when, when shown at the QuakeCon reveal, suggesting that the game may be far, far enough along for a 2015 release, hopefully later on this year. And finally, one more post that I'm going to read out today uh, in this video is, is another one uh, on a website called We've Got This Covered.com. And it was basically an article uh, of the QuakeCon reveal, mind that, it was just Facebook, 
uh, basically of the QuakeCon reveal um, of the gameplay and stuff. So this coming from someone who has um, actually been and seen it in uh, slightly more detail. Our first two gameplay demos started near the beginning of the game. Your Space Marine admires his helmet for a moment before locking it into place and bringing up the HUD. Everything is laid out in front of you in realistic positions. Right off the bat, the Union Aerospace Corporation area we see looks very hellish. The red glare of magma laps at the bottom of the screen while the catwalks beneath your feet show no small amount of wear and tear. Holding your trusty shotgun, even the barrel shows wear of being used before. Walking around, certain key points are highlighted in your view before the data from them is saved. As the screams from demons seem to echo from, from the very thin air around you, uh, we're not sure how this will play out quite yet, but it seems to be the closest thing to, to a quest log of some kind that we should expect out of the game. Doom isn't a tactical shooter, this is a frantically paced combat game. Killing and trying to be trying to avoid being killed are your sole priority. We got our first glimpse of the demons. The level of detail is definitely impressive, and a few shots of the shotgun highlight the vulnerabilities of their very fragile frame before they finally are torn into pieces. It's very it's made very, very clear that it's literally meaning torn to pieces. Doom's weapon play is absolutely visceral, but the melee combat is borderline uncomfortable with how powerful it seems to be. Enemies will flicker when they've taken enough damage, allowing you to pull off the finishing moves in style. There's a, there's a wide variety of melee kills, all met with roars of approval from the crowd who were watching. Punching and snapping of the neck was among the most tame of the kills, with the highlights being ripping out a demon's heart and ripping apart the demon's skull with your bare hands, leaving behind only some teeth and the tip of the spinal cord. The second part of this goes on to say, the second demo took place on the actual surface of Mars. The tension was ratcheted up a notch, and the audio was gently muted and a Geiger counter beeped softly in the distance. This tension wasn't meant to last long, as, as they encountered a horde of demons again. Switching to the trusty chainsaw, we, all, we quite literally were able to tear through the enemies. In one impressive moment, a demon also raised his arms to protect himself and was presumably scared as well before the chainsaw simply cut through him and sliced his torso in half. This demo was highlighted by one morbidly obese monster chasing us around, presumably the Mancubus, as, as we peppered rockets into its torso while trying to avoid taking fire from lesser demons. After finally wearing it down, we managed to rip out its exposed stomach before force feeding to the beast, leading to a massive explosion of blood and organs onto the floor. Doom isn't aiming to be a subtle game, this is going to be a nasty, very dirty title aimed to keep you on the edge of your seat and uncomfortable the entire time. So knowing all of that, that's pretty much all I have, all I found and that kind of thing. I have found other things but I can't remember them, I can't find them. Uh, I'm trying to go by the things that I found and I have links to. Um, like I said, all the things I've talked about, if you don't want to, if you haven't been bothered to listen to the video, that's absolutely fine. You can read them and check them out for yourself, like I said, the descriptions are all below. Um, personally, I just want to say I am, excuse my language, fucking excited for this game. It, from what I've heard, I mean, whether it's true or not, whether it's just it, the, the views and the opinions are, are different, you know, that kind of thing. I don't care, from what, everything that I've heard, I am so, so excited about this game. It sounds amazing, it looks amazing, and I don't even know what it looks like, okay? <laughs> I'm really excited about it. Um, uh, personally, I don't know if we'll see anything of it anytime soon. Uh, obviously, as I speak right now, personally, um, uh, the, the, there was recently a, a reveal of something like uh, Bethesda are going to have their own E3 conference. Now, whether they're talking about Fallout 4 or another Elder Scrolls game or something like that, I personally feel confident they're going to talk a bit more about Doom 4. Um, but who knows? I mean, they are, they're only sort of publishing it and stuff like that. Um, as for the game itself, like I said, I just can't wait. I'm just, I keep searching every day for something new. Uh, just everything I've heard just sounds incredible. I'm mind blown by the amazing stuff. I can't wait for a trailer. I can't wait for more gameplay, for screenshots, for a bloody release date. So I hope you guys are just as excited and happy about the new Doom game coming um, as just as just as much as me. I'm a huge fan of Doom. Um, like a, you know, 
So, yeah, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch. I know it's a very long video, it's very descriptive and detailed, but there's no other way I can, I can get this information out to other people. I want to share what I've learned and what I've found out, so... If you like this video and you want to share it around with fellow Doom fans and friends, then go ahead. Um, click the share button. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you want to do, do or know or tell me a bit more, then sure, go ahead in the comments below. Uh, yeah, and I'll see you guys in, in another video. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.